Hello, hello, and welcome to The Connecting Point. I am Dr. Marcy, your facilitator for this discussion today. This is the place where creators connect to inspire, share their ideas and stories, to transform the world through raw and unedited talk. And today I am here with someone I just met. This is Miss Amina Scott. Welcome to the Connecting Point, Miss Scott. Hi. Miss Scott, uh, we will tell the Connecting Point here in a moment, but I, I got to let you know I do have to tell how we connected. Thus, okay. the name of this platform. And audience, as you can see, sometimes I know the guest and sometimes I do not. It's whoever God sends this way. And so this person was sent this way because she reached out to me through the website, Dr. Marcy's Connections, and she wanted to tell her story. And this place, this platform is designed for those who have inspirational stories that can transform the world or change someone's way of thinking uh, so that we can transform the world for the better. And so when she reached out to me, I reached out to her. That's why we're here. And she does have a story to tell. Welcome to the connecting point again, Miss Scott. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Miss Scott, will you tell the audience a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and where you are now? Um, well, like she said, my name is Amina. I'm from Washington, D.C. And where, I'm, where I am now is going towards my calling, speaking truth, and speaking life into others. Mm -hmm. Now, Miss Scott, I just heard you say you're going towards your calling. How did you identify your calling? Uh, God, you, God told me to always, <laughs> he always talked to me. And I used to have a, a fear of speaking. I used to be so timid of speaking all the time. But now I, I don't have that problem. Mm -hmm. And he got me out of my comfort zone. And he told me that um that I'm a speaker. I'm more of a motivational speaker. So that's what I'm going towards and speaking life to other people. Cause it that means a lot to me to go out there and reach those souls that are that that don't know Christ. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I think it is so awesome that you said you once feared. And because a lot of people don't understand, yes, to step out on a calling, it can sometimes be intimidating. Yes. Or it feels like you can't do it. And of course, mm -hmm. we can't without God. Exactly. We need him. If if he if you think you can do it on your own, it's probably not from God. Because whatever you he has called you to do, you're going to need him to do it. And you're also going to need the help of his people, others right. to help you do it. And That's so right. I am glad that you heard the call and you answered. Obviously, you've answered yes, right? Yes. That's exactly. why you're here. <laughs> yes. yes. Now, you did tell me a little bit about your story. You said um, to me that you have been dealing with something, and that is lupus. Yes. Yes. And what is, can you explain to the audience what exactly is lupus? Well, I have um, symptomatic lupus um, and it um, attacks the organs. And, um, they say this one was is the dangerous one because you never know what, what will it attack. Um, and if you don't get it checked out, it can actually kill you. Mm -hmm. You can actually die from lupus. Um, but it's a symptomatic loop. It's a symptomatic disease. It's not contagious. You can't just catch it like, oh, well, I'm going to touch you. You got lupus. No, it don't work that way. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually, it's not even inherited. It's not uh, from your family member. It's just, hey, I, God said, I guess this is what God gave me. He knew I could deal with it and I could bear, I could bear that. So, 
but it's I tell you, but it's a tough journey. Um, because I had it, um, I had it when I was five. Um, they they discovered it around about six, about six, because they took a lot of tests. Took a lot of tests, and they told my mommy that it was very rare for a child this age to catch lupus. Normally, normally it's it runs in the adult ages around the adult time, but mine's was I'm talking about at at five. <laughs> well, I'm so, gonna, I'm gonna I listen to what you said. You said God gave it to you. I'm I'm not gonna agree with that. That God didn't give it to you, but He's going to use it for your good. Yes, for my good. That's changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, exactly, yeah. We, <laughs> that's exactly what he did, though. That's exactly what he did. So it's yeah, so um, but and I love that because that you just corrected that because you know God do know you in your room before you was in your room, so He know what you can bear and what you can handle. Yeah. So, he knew, like, if see, I feel like if he picked somebody else in my family member, and when I was younger, I didn't really understand it because you always you see, um, you see your family members go on vacations, and but you you in the hospital all the time, and and you be like, why why me why me you know, and sometimes that why me is always a, a not a good answer to ask. <laughs> so I um one thing I could say is about my lupus it's not it hasn't been active. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been active. So what do you mean when you say it hasn't been active? Explain that. Mm, okay. When when you have lupus, um when they took my kidneys that um took my both my kidneys out. Cause it um the lupus um that's what organ it it attacked mm -hmm. it attacked both of my both of my kidneys so they had to take it out and I had to be on dialysis that's why I have a, a you know a graft mm -hmm. um I had to be on dialysis and the first machine that I ever <laughs> I ever was on was the peritoneal dialysis which it goes right here towards your tummy mm -hmm. I didn't like that you know. Um, and it got affected, so I had to go on the the graph. This doc, this one, the that's called hemodialysis. And since I've been on that, my um lupus haven't been active like far as um most times. Most times when you dealing with lupus, it messes with your joints. Uh huh. Um, it, it messes with your joints. It gets them some of this. It's not a a normal pain. Like I remember I was I had to be about 10, 11 when it was still a little active and I was in a contraction. The, I couldn't even walk on my left hip mm. um, because it was um, attacking my joints. What I mean by when I say it's not active, I mean it's not attacking the, um, you know, it's deactivated, the I can say. Mm -hmm. mm. It's not... Um, I don't have to take no medicine for it. I don't have to take none of that stuff for it. See, I never had to take medicine for my lupus. And I'd be like, wow, I see a lot of people um, take medicine for their lupus. And I'd be like, whoa. I mean, but when I had, when I was like five, I didn't even understand what, what everybody else. But the thing is, God allowed me to see a lot of things, though, when I was a child. Um, being in the hospital, seeing all those kids in the hospital, in the burn unit. I was in a burn unit um, because the lupus um, affected my scalp. I had to get all my hair cut off. Mm -hmm. um, I was so upset because my hair was very long. And I was like, oh, my goodness, I'm going to be bald mm -hmm. And um, I used to get teased a lot just because of that. And your, once you start dialysis, the um it's supposed to and it don't happen for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to deactivate the um the lupus. Mm -hmm. Because now that's your kidney. That's your um it's it's actually um cycling your body, mm -hmm. you know. But some people it doesn't work that way. Um if you miss treatment, if you miss a lot of treatments and dialysis, it can activate the lupus back. It could come back 
being activated. And that's what a lot of people go wrong when they uh, start missing treatment. You know, uh, as you were talking, uh, it came to me, the reason you haven't had to take medication is because it's not your lupus. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, 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 I'm listening to your language. When you say my lupus, no, it's not yours. Yes. So God is, uh, God is, you know, um, he doesn't want you to rest in the fact of a diagnosis. Yes, we're real. We real, you know, we got to go through the steps that we have to go to, through to be well, because God also ordained doc, some of these doctors to take help take care of you. But, yes. but it's different for you because he is in the midst of it. He's using it yes. for your good. That's, that's and exactly others. Uh -huh. uh huh. That's so true because um, I used to have. I mean, I still have some blood nosebleeds. Sometimes it depends on how bad the humidity is, and mm -hmm. um, but I don't have it as bad mm -hmm. like I used to have it. Like I still have seizures. That's what call um. That's one of the side effects of the lupus. And, but I don't have it as bad as I used to. See, things turn around as you start doing things. Um, and um, far as, like I said, far as what God shows me, I mean, you would see all these kids. You would think that you're the only one that's sick, but it's not true. You see babies in the hospital. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen it all. I've seen a lot. For a young girl, I've seen a lot, and you be like, "Wow, what? Why? Why are these babies? Why are these people in this burn unit?" When I was in the burn unit, I couldn't believe I was in the burn unit, and I seen a lot of burnt victims. Like, I was like, "Oh my goodness, um, these poor, poor kids. They got they burnt. You see, they." And on, on their face and their bodies and stuff. So I could, I could, I used to tell my mommy and cry to my mommy all the time and be like, "Mommy, I can't be in this place because it's too much, too much." I'm seeing all these, you know, people that sick. It's it's just too much. I remember with my cousin, my cousin, she was dealing with cancer. This is my favorite cousin. I looked up to her. I used to want to be a lawyer, just just like her. Um. And everything. Oh my goodness. But she passed. She passed. She had cancer. Um, I think it was um le 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 leukemia. I think it was that. I think it was that one. But she passed and I come I used to look at her all the time and not being sick. You know, not being sick. I thought, you know, I'm the one that's sick in the family. But then she turned around and got sick. Um she was about 18 mm -hmm. and I'm some on on a road student and everything. Like this is my, my uncle this is my uncle only child. And, um, I couldn't bear, you know, to see my favorite cousin go through that. Even though I was younger going through what I was going through. I couldn't even bear that. She, I, I was seeing all these things happening to her and I was like, Oh my goodness. I, I just, don't understand God why I, I have to see all that stuff, you know. But I feel like that one thing about it, God made me stronger in the midst of everything, even in that time. Um, <laughs> my mommy, she was she was at Rock. I'm saying she will always be there for me. My mommy used to work at Pentagon. Used to work at the Pentagon, so she would come off come off of work. I'd be at um the hospital. Um, she'll come there, stay. Oh, uh, it it'd be a lot, and it, and I can understand it's a lot on a mom that has a child that's sick. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh my goodness, you couldn't. I couldn't thank her enough for just being my mommy and being there. And you know, it it's it's just it's really um amazing to see how you look good. Your skin looks refreshed. Um, yeah. And yet you're saying you are dealing with something. Now, you also shared with me that you had attempted to take your own life. 
Yes. What led to that? Was it the diagnosis of lupus? What was it that led you to want to check out? Me and my, me and my, um, I call him my brother, um, but he's really my cousin. So that's why I always say my brother slash cousin all the time. We was like this, <laughs> like. Oh my goodness! Uh, where he go, I go. Be in trouble, I'm in trouble. I was. He will always protect me uh, from bullies. Anybody that that will mess with me, he will. He will get them. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> he will like jump. You jump, I'm gonna jump higher. You know, <laughs> like that type of guy. <laughs> uh, he was so sad. He should have been a track star. Um, and we used to, we used to pray all the time in the house. A lot of things went on and in my, in my house, in my, you know, in at a young age, seen a lot. We used to get teased all the time. And my um brother's last cousin, he passed. When he passed, I, I was in, um, I went to, I said, okay, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life, you know. I was in the stuck, stuck zone because after, even after that, it was a denial. Um, him and my, my older brother went to a club. And I remember that night because I used to tell him, I was like, yeah, let's just watch Bad Boys. You know, we watch Bad Boys Friday. You know, get some popcorn, um, get the Lay's potato chips, because that's what we, we would take the salt and vinegar. We love the Lay's salt and vinegar potato chips. Don't, don't mess with us, okay? We would tear them joints out, and we will go to walk down to the shell, and just, because um, we used to live around 4th Street. Um, and I was like, um, just stay home, you know, just stay home, man. You know, we could watch that. But he didn't want to. He wanted to be with the big boys, you know. He ain't want. He ain't want to chill with me that day. He said, "I want to go to the club." <laughs> so both of them was looking um dressed alike or whatever. But something was going on. I I mean, I got a call. My mommy and them got a call, and saying that they was locked up. And um. I was like, okay, you know, I'm waking up. And I'm, I didn't even go to sleep till at least about four o'clock that, mo that morning. And I was so upset with them because I'm like, y'all know I'm going to be worried about y'all. Why y'all not here? You know, and, but turned out that they was at a club and an altercation came about an older guy, an older man. He was jealous of my, my brother slash cousin. And he got some guys, some some guys to to kill him. Hmm. And they shot him, um they shot him right in the car and he passed away in my brother's lap. And um hmm. they didn't say that on the phone. When I um when we got the call, I'm thinking that they in jail, you know. So I go to dialysis that day. And when I get back, I see all these people, all these people outside. And I'm wondering, why are these people outside? Outside, people all in my house, you know. But when I got to the door, I felt it. I felt something. And, you know, at that time, I wasn't into, um, we knew about Christ. My mommy and them, they all Catholics. Mm -hmm. So we did know about Christ. Um, and I, I felt a spirit, and I, I knew something was wrong because I tears were about to come down, and I'm wondering why I'm crying. You know, you know, I'm only I'm young. I don't know why I'm crying like this. But I went in there, and my aunt boyfriend told me. She, I said, "What's wrong?" And she, he was like, "She don't even know." When he said that, it scared me. I thought my older brother was, you know, something happened to him because I'm thinking my my other my brother says, "Cousin, he the run, you know, he try, he get it, get goes," but. It didn't happen like that. I ain't see him. And my mommy, when my mommy said she had to take me to the bathroom and talk to me, 
I was like, and she told me that he passed away. I was disturbed. Like, I was in denial. I didn't know what to believe. My best friend, they was in my room. I told them to get out because I didn't want to see nobody crying. You know, I didn't want to see that because I, I was so in denial. Even at the even at the funeral, I'm seeing him in his casket. I said, that's not my brother, Celeste, because I know that's not him. I said, that's not Louis Tyrone. That's not him. It's impossible. We're going to come through the door. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Y'all crying. I don't know why y'all crying. But as I went to, I said, I'm going to take a visual communication just to get out the house. So I started going to community college. And I said, um, I said, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get this out. And see, you don't know when you're going through depression or anything. You don't know these things. You don't know. And see, as a young, as a young teenager, you don't know that you're going through these things at, at that time. You just thinking that your mind is just, yeah, I'm just don't want to be bothered with. Don't want nobody to talk to me. I, I didn't, I was so standoffish. Like I didn't want nobody, nobody even come connected to, close to me. Hmm. We went to, so I went to the community college and I took up um, visual communication. Um, I love animation, stuff like that. You know, making little designs on the computer and stuff. Love computer. I'm a tech. I'm a geek. They used to always tell me, Nina, you're a geek. Mm -hmm. I know. And my mama used to always thought that I was going to be a lawyer because I love I love doing stuff about injustice and stuff like that. And I'm um, sorry, my sister ain't there. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so we went. So one that day, we had to do a paper. It was called The Meaning of Life. <clears throat> and at that time, I ain't had no meaning of life. I had no meaning of life at that time. And they said, um, so I did that. I had everybody crying when I wrote my paper. Didn't feel nothing. Didn't feel nothing. How people was reacting, how people react to it or anything. And so we all, all my classmates went out to um, Chili's. And they had their little party on. That day, that's when I decided I wanted to take my life. Mm. Well, you know, um, I'm glad you're talking about this because so many people actually go through depression. Some people don't know, know what it is, how to identify it. Yes. But, yeah. And, and, you know, like you say, you were young, you didn't know, but now you would know how to identify something's not right. right. I'm feeling mm -hmm. numb. You were feeling numb mm -hmm. the world around you. Yep. I even miss I even miss five days of dialysis. Mm. I um I miss five days, and at that time, my heart, and I say my heart, it felt like a brick. Like I could actually see it in my hand, beating in my hand, and I'm visualizing it beating in my hand, and I'm like, and it's talking to me. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it's like talking to me, like. I'm about to die. Come save me. Help me. Mm -hmm. And I got scared. I got scared, but not, not scared that I wanted to leave the earth. Scared that I was actually visualizing it, my mm -hmm. heart in my mm. And And then when that happened, when that happened, my mommy and I'm gonna tell you how God works though. Mm -hmm. This is when I this is when when God steps in. Mm -hmm. My aunt and my cousin, my big cousin, they came, they normally don't even come around 11 something at night. Mm -hmm. But God sent them there. Mm -hmm. God sent them there because he knew I, what I was going through at that time. And they knew I didn't have no ride to get, my mommy didn't have no ride to get to, no hospital, no nothing. So by the time my aunt got dead, I was already visualizing my heart in my hand. And I was like, mommy, something wrong with me, something wrong. Uh, uh, my heart in my hand, I'm, I'm, tell, I'm telling her what, what I'm visualizing, but she don't understand. Mm -hmm. And she was scared. So next thing you know, the the door 
the door. Somebody knock at the door, and it's my aunt and my big cousin. Mm. And I tell you how God works. I love, I'm telling you, I love Jesus so much. And I went all the way. They took me all the way to Georgetown. Could have took me anywhere. But they went to me all the way up to Georgetown Hospital. And by the time I got there, I couldn't walk. Because if I walked, I would have went in cardiac arrest. Ooh. And I'm going to tell you, the lady checked my heart. She said, I can't believe this. Let me check it again. I didn't even make it to the next um, check for my heart. I went into cardiac arrest. And once I went into cardiac arrest, I couldn't believe it. Mm. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here. Actually, seeing my mom outside. I'm talking about I really had an outside of body experience. I see my mommy calling my name, Mimi. She called me Mimi, holding my hand, crying. And I'm thinking, why am I in my mind? I'm thinking in this in this out of body experience, why am I doing this to my mommy? Why am I doing this? Why am I acting like this? But I didn't know. I didn't know. I was being selfish at the time mm-hmm. and dealing with my own, dealing with my own pain. Mm-hmm. And God told me to go right back into that body. Go right back mm. into that. He, I couldn't even get all the way to where I wanted to be. And I went ahead to go back into my body. And I was so mad at God when I got out of my body. Because I was like, you want me to go back into a sick body? I, I don't, I want to be, I was like, I want to be with my, my brother slash cousin is at. That's where I want to be. Mm. Okay? I don't have nobody here to protect me. Nobody here to fight for me. I got to fight bullies all the time. So, God didn't, he just put me back in my body. And then when I finally broke down at dialysis, when I got out of the hospital, finally got out of the hospital, and I went to dialysis, I was hearing this Seven Campbell song, Don't Say Goodbye. And wow. I finally broke down about my brother's cousin. And I couldn't believe that I had so much hurt in me about that. And then I said, okay, then here go God again. God brought my big sister to me and my big sister Brenda and asked me to come to church. Now, at the time I told you I was a Catholic. Mm-hmm. And she said, come to church. She kept asking me to come to church. This is her third time asking me. I said, I'm going to go ahead and go. And when I went there, I'm telling you, this was the most changeable, changeable life, time of my life. I went there, and it was time for prayer. My pastor, which is my pastor now, prayed over me. And I felt, when he prayed over me, I felt God. I asked, I asked my sister Brenda, who, what is that? What is that? And I'm telling you, ever since then, God haven't let up on me yet. Mm. I mean, I didn't see God in me at first, but now I do. And I overcame that. And I I, I was like, I, I took a vow I would never do that again. Not even to my family, you know? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be that selfish, whereas take I would take my life. life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I okay. was like... Let me tell you something. I'm trying not to cry on here uh, <laughs> because I know that was... Even yeah. you seeing the heart in your hand was God giving you a warning of what, what, what was about to happen if mm-hmm. you reached out. Good God Almighty. Lord have mercy. Yeah. And you know, um, all I could hear while you were talking was to tell people, don't check out. That's right. Don't check okay. out because there is a future that you haven't seen yet. Yes, it's it's so much you what I learned is when I say I learned, I learned a lot. Then just dealing with that. Mm-hmm. And coming to grips that yes, even the even the strongest person you might think that's in your family can go through something. You don't never know what they might be going through, but they will make it through. They will make even it when you're even if you're sick. Um, don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your goals. Keep going. Keep 
fighting yes, because God. victory is yours. Victory is yours. God says it. And I just continue to fight. I learned how to fight in that. I learned how to fight, fight for myself. I mean, I, I mean, I, I used to think when I was at that point that I needed a, I needed somebody to fight for me. But God wanted me to fight for myself. He was like, I'm here with you, fighting with you. That's that's the that's it right there. That's I want it. you to fight. He fights with us. Now, mm -hmm. actually, the fight, the battle already been won. Yes. So you can't win without him. Exactly. The enemy, let me tell you something about the enemy, which I know many people already know. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he comes in through our thoughts. Yes, he does. In hopes that it will change the heart. But if you stay connected, stay connected so that the enemy is not telling you all these things. You got to cast that those thoughts down. Yes. We all have had negative thoughts. If somebody tell you they haven't, they are lying. We have all had negative thoughts one way or the other. But you have to cast it down. And what I mean by that is, Take those thoughts and replace them with what God says about you. Yes, that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to do. Um, no matter what you're in, no matter what circumstance you're in, no matter what type of struggle you're in, you can do anything through Christ who strengthens you. All you got to do is keep pushing light within yourself. I always go back to the lady with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. Because the thing about her, she encouraged me. She she encouraged me. She she went through so much for twelve years. Twelve years. And guess what? So she got. She said, "I'm going to get what I want. I'm going to get my healing." And the thing about it, that's exactly what you have to do. You have to speak within yourself. Have to speak life within yourself. I don't. It doesn't matter if you're the only person that's right there that's speaking life to yourself. Mm -hmm. Nobody don't have to speak life. God, God gave you the words already to speak it to yourself. That's and that's what that's what I love about the lady with the issue of blood. Because soon when she touched the hem of his garment, she was healed. Her faith is what made her heal. That's just it. by fighting her faith for what she believes in. Mm -hmm. Her faith she is what it was. Because yes. listen, Jesus, he's there. He's he 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 delivered us, he redeemed us, he healed us when he stretched his body out on the cross. But yes. do you receive it? And that's a lot. That's a lot. We right receive there. it by our faith in right. that he has already done it. Yes. That is that's how it. you receive it. Yep, you got that's that's exactly how you receive it. You receive it by faith. Mm -hmm. You receive it by faith. And that's a lot of times some people some people struggles with that. But you just gotta believe and trust in trust in him. Oh my goodness, especially especially what he did with Job. Job stayed still. He was like, Though you may slay me, I will trust be and that's exactly how you got to keep telling yourself that you're going to trust in him no matter what the storm may be no matter what comes your way continue to stay encouraged keep your head up and keep pushing keep fighting for what's yours because victory is yours it's, and God already, is it's already there and guess yep, what it's, it's impossible it is impossible. That's why the word said it's impossible to please God without faith. That's why, right. Why would he say that? Because yes. you have to have it. Faith, you have to have it. Faith, faith. Now yeah. somebody told you, you have to know and believe for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he says show and show approve. He mm -hmm. said you got to show and prove for yourself. You have to. And that's why I I love encouraging those um that are that's going through a sick battle, that's going that that don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. Um 
I also it it took me from my experience looking at my um my brother slash cousin got me as a um advocate going towards stop the violence and and speaking speaking about violence and everything because everything everything has a meaning. Mm-hmm. Everything is a reason why you're still here. Is a reason why God is still putting air in your lungs to yeah. breathe because it's a reason why you're still here. I um I recognize my calling and I accept it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it because I'm not gonna I'm not going to not be available for Jesus. I'm not. I'm always gonna be available. Well, you know, in the in in the Bible, when God gave out the, the, the talents, there was one that bared his talents. God referred to him as being evil. Uh-huh. So you must, if you don't use what he gave you, do you want to be viewed in God's eyesight as evil? Because he gave you a purpose to activate here on this earth not yes. for yourself but for others yes that's it that's it mm-hmm. and um that's exactly why i want to tell my story um mm-hmm. so other people can get encouraged by it other people can see look what he does for me he can do the same for you he can you can get you can get through this if you if you need me, I can hold your hand while we pray over it. Mm-hmm. And we could we get down with it. Okay. We're gonna tell that devil he's a liar. We know he's a liar. And we're gonna stop on him every chance we get. Well, you know what, Amina Scott, I thank you so much for sharing your story, for even reaching out. You don't know me from Adam. You didn't know me. <laughs> but listen, God knows both of us. Yes. And so he's going to make the right connecting point to get the word out to others, to encourage others through our conversation. And I thank you so much for even doing, uh, reaching out to me. Thank you. Thank and you. Now, Miss Scott, if someone wants to reach you to even be motivated or to even show up as a motivational speaker somewhere, uh, whether it's virtual or in person, how can they reach you without giving out your phone number? Um, well, I'm on Facebook. That's Amina Scott. I'm on a gram. That's IG. I'm on that's Amina Scott. Everything is Amina Scott. I don't change it. Um, and I'm always, like I said, I'm always on, I'm on Twitter as well. But on my Twitter page, I'm Amina, um, Cause I did my Twitter page when Obama came in, <laughs> so I put it Amina underscore Obama. So it's um I was so happy that that we had a black president. So yeah. I said I'm gonna put Obama right there. So um that's on my Twitter page, but I'm I'm everywhere. I'm on LinkedIn as Amina Scott, um Facebook as Amina Scott, IG <laughs> as Amina Scott. Everything is my name. And spell your name out for people so they can find it easy. Okay. That's A-M-E-N-N-A, Scott, S-C-O-T-T. Everybody got that? Amina Scott. Now, Amina, Godspeed. You've shared some other things with me about what God is showing you to do. And I told you, don't say it on here. But Godspeed on that. I know he's going to make the resources available for you to pursue. (laughs) Yeah. And audience, like I say every week, if you would like to be a part of the discussion here on the Connecting Point to share your story, to encourage or inspire others, reach out to me at drmarcyts at gmail.com. Or you may reach me at the Connecting Point for Creators group. On Facebook, it's just a private group of creators of all kind uh, to network, promote each other, and receive daily inspiration throughout the week. If that sounds like something you would like to be a part of, just send an invite to join, and we would love to have you. 
This show airs on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. on YouTube, Instagram TV, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also catch it on Wednesday nights at KBCN TV, Spotify, and Anchor. All that I ask is that you click like and share so that others may be inspired. You can help transform the world by joining me and sharing these wonderful stories. Yes. Again, thank you, Amina. God bless. Yes. God audience, bless you. Until we have this moment again, audience, peace and blessings. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>